I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. And he's seen a squirrel already. Now today we're at a place called Morton in Dorset. It's about three miles to the south of Bear Regis and six miles west of Wareham. And we're going to be doing a roughly four mile circular route that I'm going to call the Lawrence of Arabia Trail. It actually starts near the spot where T.E. Lawrence met with his fatal accident and it passes his home at Clouds Hill and then goes through Morton Forest crossing the River Froome to the tiny hamlet of Morton and the church where Lawrence is buried and then back through the forest over some heathland. Now uh, I'm filming right at the end of February. The sun is out, there's hardly any clouds in the sky, but it is bitterly cold, so we're well wrapped up. So do come along with us and hopefully you'll find it an interesting walk. That's if I can keep him away from the squirrels. Well, before I start the walk, I better tell you a bit about T.E. Lawrence, otherwise uh, the rest of the video won't make much sense. I guess most of you will know a bit about uh, him from the uh, 1962 film Lawrence of Arabia that starred uh, what, Peter O'Toole and um, Omar Sharif. But who was he? Well I'll give you a little bit of a history and I, I will try and uh, keep it brief because I don't want this to be a massive history lesson so uh, <laughs> do bear with me. Thomas Edward Lawrence was born in Wales in 1888, but from the age of eight lived in Oxford where he studied modern history at Jesus College. In 1909, he undertook a walking tour of what is today Syria and Palestine, working as an archeologist and collecting material for a thesis on Crusader castles. Now that area was then part of the Ottoman or Turkish Empire and during his 1,100 mile walk, Lawrence, as well as becoming fluent in Arabic, fell in love with the Arab people and culture and identified with their struggle for freedom from their Turkish masters. When the First World War started, the Ottoman Empire allied itself with Germany and Lawrence joined the military intelligence and was posted to Cairo, where he was soon taking an active role in leading the Arab revolt. He united the Arab tribes, captured the vital port of Aqaba in 1917, and then led the Arabs into Damascus in 1918. And during the closing years of the war, Lawrence sought to convince his superiors in the British government that Arab independence was in their interests, but he was met with mixed success. A secret agreement between France and Britain contradicted the promises of independence that Lawrence had made to the Arabs, and he became frustrated with what he saw as the betrayal of the Arab cause. In 1922, Lawrence left the army and joined the RAF as an aircraftsman under the name of Ross. His real identity was soon discovered and uh, he joined the Tank Corps at Bovington, this time under the name Shaw, and he bought Clouds Hill Cottage as a retreat. In 1925 he rejoined the RAF and spent the next ten years developing and testing high-speed boats as well as working at RAF Calshot. Throughout these years he lived at Clouds Hill, returning whenever he could. Okay. Well, thanks for listening to that, but hopefully that gives you some background. Let's get on with the walk. Well, I've parked my car at a little free car park right by a viewing area that looks over the uh, Bovington Tank training area that's just behind me here. Now, Bovington Camp is a large military base, uh, and with Lulworth Camp, it forms part of the Bovington Garrison and the garrison is home to the armour centre and contains a couple of barracks complexes as well as two forest and heathland training areas that basically supports training for the Royal Armoured Corps amongst others. It's also home to the Tank Museum. Bobbington is also a headquarters of the Royal Armoured Corps and the regimental headquarters of the Royal Tank Regiment and Royal Wessex Yeomanry. Well basically it's tank city round these parts. I think I'm right in saying that both Prince William and Prince Harry trained here in the past. 
but it is uh, quite poignant you know I think when I was coming out here this morning on the news you know tanks uh, Russian tanks invading Ukraine it just uh, does bring things home somewhat anyway let's have a little wander and as you can see this uh, viewing area here there's a few information boards that tell you a bit about uh, the garrison and uh, its heritage Ah, a little board here and I don't know if you can see it. it's a bit sort of dark here with the Sun directly to my right but uh, yeah, we're parked there and basically we're going to go up to Clouds Hill along here have a look at Morton and then back along here across some uh, some heathland and uh, what else have we got here well more information about the type of tanks that you can watch train here at certain times I'm pleased to say it's very uh, very peaceful at the moment and just walking across to the other side of the little car park is uh, a memorial to uh, T.E. Lawrence what does it say there yeah T.E. Lawrence crashed on his motorbike here um, there's actually a little memorial further along and uh, we'll see that that's nearer to where the actual crash took place well we're going to start our walk heading northwards through a little wooded area with the tank firing range on our right there is a sign here now I think risk of fire low is more um, actual fire fires rather than actual tanks firing we will see uh, glimpses of the training area from time to time on the walk it uh, the area was established way back in 1899 as an infantry training area I think it was a rifle range before becoming a a camp for machine gun corps in 1916 and then the tank corps in 1917 now this is about 100 yards or so further north from the car park where we saw the first uh, memorial to T.E. Lawrence and this one I think actually marks much nearer the spot where uh, he had uh, the accident and if I <laughs> see if I can climb up the bank without uh, Oh, there we go, managed to do it. And here's the road up here. Now, Lawrence had a fascination with speed and whilst living at Clouds Hill, which is just uh, uh, further up the road here, he uh, bought a Bruff Superior SS100 motorcycle, uh, which he rode at great speed along the lanes of Dorset. And on the 13th of May, 1935, I think he was only 46 years old at the time, uh, he rode down this road from Clouds Hill to post a telegram at Bovington and returning he swerved to avoid two cyclists in a dip in the road and he was thrown from his bike fracturing his skull he died five days later well the road has been straightened considerably uh, since uh, the 1930s there have been a number of conspiracies over the years uh, concerning his death but uh, I'll let you look that up on the internet. just enjoyed a rather pleasant meander through some woodland we had the tank uh, training area on our right we were on the public footpath we counted two tanks that were passing by noisy things anyway we're at the main road now we're going to turn left <laughs> and head towards Clouds Hill well I've just made my way along to Clouds Hill that's just behind me here it's a tiny cottage uh, originally built as a forester's cottage on the Morton estate in the early 19th century and Lawrence discovered it semi-ruined in 1923 and decided it would make an ideal retreat and he rented it from the estate initially before buying it in 1925 he basically used it for evenings and weekends away from his duties at uh, Bovington camp and it was very 
basic with just three rooms and a bath and a cupboard. Uh, the upstairs room was for music and the room downstairs was for books. I think he actually slept in a sleeping bag. And after Lawrence's death, his brother gave it to the National Trust. You can visit, although uh, they don't allow dogs. And it remains largely as it was uh, at his uh, time of his death, although a bit more like a museum uh, to his life. Anyway, check out the uh, opening times uh, if you're in the area. And just panning around, um, so the sun might get in the lens here, but the little hut there, I think that's where he used to keep his motorbike. <laughs> and there's some information boards in there as well. I'll tell you what, it is quite glorious now. The sun's out, blue sky, beautiful. Okay, we left uh, Clouds Hill, headed westwards. We're now heading southwards uh, along uh, Morton Drive and going to be going through the uh, Morton Plantation. We should get some terrific scenery here as well. Continuing along Morton Drive, and so it's mainly sort of pine trees, um, quite a lot of well, I'd call it heathland, a lot of heather and gorse, and a few bits of marshy areas as well. It's a beautiful day to be out. Sometimes I think this is the best time of year because if it's a glorious sunny day, you don't have to worry about flies and it's not gonna to get too hot. So, uh, beautiful, the real freshness to today. I love the way the, uh, the pattern of those uh, roots where the soil's eroded away. <laughs> I, think, um, I think I might give the swing a miss though. I don't think it could, I don't think it could hold 15 stone, that's the problem. Well, we're making our way to our next destination, which is the village of Morton itself, just about across uh, what looks like a large stream. This is actually part of the, the River Froome, which uh, is a 30 mile long river. It rises at Evershot south of Yeovil and flows all the way to Wareham into Poole Harbour. Indeed, we've done a walk at Wareham where we uh, saw the estuary there. But say, so this is just a a small part of it, the main bit, we're just about to cross very shortly. It looks lovely, uh, uh, with the water glinting away with the sunshine. And this is the, the bigger part of the, the River Froome. And I believe that this is one of the longest fords in the south of England. Thankfully, there's a nice bridge. Now, it might just be a little bit chilly for this Brig Brave Whippet <laughs> to show uh, the dog dip facilities here. But there is a big brave gun dog on the other side that's uh, enjoying uh, a dip. Now, uh, keen film goers might remember the 1996 film Emma, which was based on the, well, the book of the same name by um, Jane Austen. It starred Gwyneth Paltrow. And uh, there was a scene there when um, Frank Churchill, who I believe was played by uh, Ewan McGregor, he came across Emma who, um, well, her carriage had been stuck in a river and he came to her rescue. Well, that actual scene took place at this exact spot. Lovely, lovely day to be out. Yes. Yes. Now you've definitely got the best method of transport across. 
Enjoy the rest of your ride. Now we'll find out how deep it is. <laughs> Okay, well, we're just about to enter the village of Morton. So that's uh, where we've come from with the, the Ford. And then just by me here is, I think it's the old post office. I did come across an old photograph of what it used to look like in days gone by. And then what a delightful little street down there with the thatched cottages. Quite uh, enchanting. We've now made our way to the church which is where the funeral took place of T.E. Lawrence on the 21st of May 1935. Found some old pictures off the internet and there were quite a few uh, important people here including uh, Winston Churchill. Anyway, let's have a look at the church itself. It's uh, the Church of St. Nicholas known as uh, St. Magnus Martyr until it was, the dedication was changed in 1490. It was rebuilt in 1776, uh, reusing the medieval foundations of the previous church that dated back to 1190. It was financed by the Frampton family who lived in the manor house nearby. Indeed, there's a, the initials JF above the door. So it consists of a nave, aspidals, sanctuary, a north aisle that was added in 1841, and a west porch that was added in 1848 and a tower but in 1940 it suffered major damage when it was hit by a German bomb there was an RAF airfield not far from here and it was rebuilt over the following two decades now one of the fascinating things about this church are some very striking etched glass windows they were installed between 1957 and 1987 but one window, and it's this one just in front of me here, um, can only actually be seen from the outside. And it's called the Judas window. Uh, and of course he hung himself in shame after betraying Christ, throwing away 30 pieces of silver that he'd been paid for the treachery. And I don't know, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this um, I'll try and take some photographs but can you see that so that's him hanging and you can see the pieces of silver and as they hit the ground um, the coins turn into flowers as they actually touch the ground suggesting forgiveness okie doke in we go oh the magnificent font then I believe that is actually 14th century although it's been painted to make it look as though it's Victorian. And uh, so you, can, you really get to see um, the etchings perhaps a little bit clearer when you're inside. And uh, just panning around this fantastic uh, aspidal on this side. Beautiful. And I mentioned the Judas window. Well, that's behind uh, that wall over there. And then, ah, just looking up, there's some sort of heraldic shields. Are those whippets on top? <laughs> it looks like it, doesn't it? But, uh, uh, just spotted something on my right, so I gradually turn around. Oh, here we go. Yeah, there's actually a photograph of uh, what the church looked like shortly after it had been bombed in 1940. Well, just uh, on the other side of the road from the church is the uh, the graveyard, and uh, just in front of it is rather magnificent entrance, four columns and a pedimented roof which actually started life in the 18th century as an entrance to the kitchen gardens at Morton House. Anyway, let's uh, go inside, see if we can find the grave of uh, 
T.E. Lawrence. It's quite easy to find because uh, you just follow the path and uh, he's right at the very, very far end, just to the left of the cry. Here we go. Dear memory of T. He Lawrence. It's extraordinary really, the, the headstone doesn't actually make any reference to his exploits in Arabia but only to his connection with uh, Oxford University. Indeed the open book at the foot of the grave displays the university motto. So we're now going to start making our way back but we're going to do a little detour to uh, the walled garden. Uh, warning it is half term, there might be a few screaming children in the background. It's uh, basically a five acre landscape gardens. It was reopened to the public in 2015. Uh, there is free entry, although they do ask for suggested donations for upkeep and uh, dogs are allowed. Folks, we decided to have a little bit of a pit stop at uh, the walled garden. But a lovely walk through. I haven't um, done any filming because a lot of children are about, but I've taken some photos. Uh, just about to enjoy a nice cup of coffee and a bacon bat. And he will get some, I promise. <laughs> oh. Lovely. You're going to have some? Ooh. The sausage bag. Well, that bap certainly filled a hole. It was actually a sausage bap, not a bacon bap. So uh, Logan ended up having most of the sausage. But there you go. So we've now uh, sort of doubled back on ourselves a little bit and crossed back over the ford. And if you're going to be look, doing this walk, just look out for a, a sign that's just behind me here. Uh, that will then take us sort of north eastwards, I suppose, towards Bobbington. Um, and this is now going to take us across some very scenic countryside. <laughs> Just one final little finger post to look out for if you're doing this walk coming across the heath which is just uh, behind me here. Um, to the right is Bobbington but we're actually going to head slightly uphill. It's signposted to uh, Clouds Hill. Just looking uh, it lovely to see that yellow gorse out in the, uh, the golden sunshine today. Well, just a very quick route update. Uh, look out for this post here that's got LT written on it. We don't carry straight on, we go to the right. It does say public footpath to the right and we now start heading slightly uphill and this will eventually take us back to uh, the car park. much on the homeward leg now, made our way to the top of a ridge and the car is just a, 
about 600 yards away but from here well, some quite fantastic views to look at across the valley just on my left hand side is actually the uh, the tank training area nice and quiet at the moment but let's have a look at some of these views isn't that uh, quite stunning very much uh, a coniferous forest and uh, a little bit of heathland as well and uh, quite a bit of rhododendron in front of me as well looks uh, it's become quite established well folks we've come to the end of our walk we thought we'd do the end scene here by the grave of T.E. Lawrence himself we hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting if you did please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment and uh, do check out our Facebook page Dave's Countryside Walks We've had a super walk today, the weather has been quite glorious and some of the scenery out on the, the forest area is quite stunning. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Good boy. <laughs>